Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show um, every week as we are doing today, and it will be available on our website and our archives for you to watch later at your convenience, and I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our show archives. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please share uh, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in any of the shows we have on Encompass Live. Um, if you are not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. So in your state, it'd be similar to your so-and-so state library. So we provide services and training and resources and grants to all sorts of libraries in the state. So you will find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries. Uh, public, K-12, academic, um, corrections, museums, archives, historical societies, um, all over the place. Uh, really, our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. Um, we cool things libraries are doing, things we think they could be doing. Um, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff <coughs> that do presentations for us, excuse me, <coughs> and we bring in guest speakers. And today we have a mixture of that. Um, but also today it is the last Wednesday of the month, so that means it's pretty sweet tech day. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Pretty Sweet Tech is every uh, once a month, Amanda Sweet. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning. She is our um, innovation li uh, technology innovation librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And the last Wednesday of every month, she comes on to talk to us about something tech related. Uh, sometimes she just shares things she's doing or a cool thing she's found out. Um, but today she has uh, brought in a guest speaker for us. Uh, with us today is Cheryl Bayer. Good morning, Cheryl. Good morning. And she is from uh, Living Pop-Ups. And I think, Amanda, you said, and I feel like I should have known this, and you did one of our Friday reads about one of their books, correct? Yeah. Um, if you search for Romeo and Juliet and Robots, you'll find the <laughs> Friday reads on there. Yeah. That's a perfect search. Everyone's going to go and do that now. And then and the right. going to be, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what I was hoping for. Yeah. 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 Here at the Library Commission, we do a weekly Friday on our blog. Um, commission staff do a Friday reads post, um, sharing about a book we've read that we want to share with people. And yeah, I'm I mean, actually up this week too. Yeah. Oh, are you? Okay. Yeah. Cool. See what you got. Um, and this was one that she presented about. And then um, I'll actually just hand it over to you. I'm I'm talking, giving all the, giving away all your secrets about how you um got all connected with Cheryl and, and getting this on the show and, and everything at the conferences and whatnot. So yeah, I'll take it away. <laughs> yeah, so I actually ran into Cheryl and company um, at this past year's ALA. So if you were at ALA, if you saw the tech playground, you may have <laughs> seen me tucked in the corner there. Um, so our booth was actually right next door to Living Pop-Ups, um, LB Bookspace. So I saw these really fun um, augmented reality books, got to play with some dragons, got to play with some robots in Shakespeare land, and it was pretty mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. So, and then I was like, yeah, this needs to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so after that kind of brief <clears throat> introduction, I'll just hand it over to Cheryl. So. You can introduce yourself, kind of give your spiel. Yeah. You know? Great. <laughs> great. Um, well, thank you so much, both Krista and Amanda. So grateful to be here. Um, and it's been really fun going to conferences like ALA or AASL, um, where I'm CEO and co-founder of Living Pop-Ups, who's created LP Bookspace. We are a platform that revolutionizes learning. Um, we're so excited to talk to you about this platform because we are not only an entertainment and technology company, but we are an education company that uses machine learning, augmented reality, storytelling for interactive learning and data collection. Now, I'm not telling you anything that you don't know. The problem we're tackling is literacy, comprehension, retention, and attention. Now, as a child, 
I grew up struggling in mm. school with material that if it if I didn't relate to it, then I couldn't retain it. But this isn't just a me thing. I think it goes for like my own kids, my grandkids, and I'm sure a lot of people see it out in the world too. I used to joke if I only had a wingman to break down the material. But as I grew older, I also realized we all need a wingman. So globally, we know that rates are for literacy and comprehension are at an all time low today for kids and adults. And I love that you're talking about correction facilities because we're talking about going into correction facilities on their tablets. Um, and they are so comfortable with their devices, right? They have deep anxiety around books. Well, so what do we wanna do? We created a solution that brought us to the experience of LP Bookspace. We take a device and bring it in as a wingman to any learning material, whether in school, at a library, in a story time or a book club and a workplace. So it's books meets an app, audibles for AR, what, with a tutor in your pocket. And why? Because people are afraid to ask for help. They're afraid to make mistakes. And we have your back. So, um, so here's what the app looks like. It's on, you know, um, Android and it's on iOS. Download it. You download your experience for a book, and then we collect the data in real time. Whether it's for teachers, librarians, <laughs> work development, higher ed. Um, so, and yes, we do love robots too. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> so here's Same. a video um, because. <laughs> Uh, showing you on the webinar was going to be a little complicated. So here's a video of how the app, once you open it up and download an experience, works. All right. Okay. Yeah. Do you want me to show it here? All right. I'm going to pull presenter control to my screen so I can show the video to everyone here. Oh, great. And can you make it big? Mm -hmm. it, it goes big. It goes big. You should see. And you have the big. sound too. Are you here to read with us? We can help you understand the story, or even have fun. Can't wait. See you in the book. So here's a reading comprehension question. I wanted to teach Benny to read, but we needed a book to teach him. I did not know how to write on pages, but Violet had a great idea for what we could use. What did we use to write in the book we made? So every AR experience has an educational pedagogy. Moldy potatoes. Look at page 112 to find out. So she redirects you. You have an opportunity in real time to reread it and have self-efficacy. You got it right. Violet had a great idea of using a burned stick out of the fire. That's how she wrote the words. So what's exciting for us is that so cool. we did, that is isn't so it cool? Funny. We use something that actually intervenes with negative brain speak. Like I said, people are afraid to make mistakes. They're afraid to ask for help. You have a wingman in the characters in the material. So this is what the dashboard looks like. Oh, where, oh, do you want to, oh was I supposed to show that video? I wasn't sure. Sure. Uh, sure. So on the back end, and by the way, on the app, in this, you go to the settings on the right hand corner and we're on Google Classroom, we're on Clever, or you can log into your own specific class on your own. So this is quite easy to use and it uploads your class immediately. So here's your students, goes to your assignments. Now, if you pause this for a second, I can just show if you pause this, you can see the pop dots have a coding. Did you complete it? Did, was it incomplete? What was the exact um, illustration that they were looking at? And it can give you the video and a synopsis. Does it show you that you got it right with redirection? Or if you got it wrong with redirection, you actually can have a teacher or a librarian come up to you without you having the, like feeling bad, come up to you and go, let me help you. I see you're having difficulty. Like, so we're looking at ways to have power positive words and not feel shame and blame when you're getting in there so you can go on from there because then you get to see each student and how they're doing in real time and so if you send home homework or if you send home 
the book, you're getting to see the impact. And this is where the ROI on the experience really works too, because you're going, oh, they're using it. Now we have a white paper that's been written that shows the research that we've done has actually had dialogic learning gone up, assessment scores gone up and confidence gone up. Thank you. Gotta love it. Yeah. Well, I do. I'm so excited because not only do not only does people like do people who are in education love it, it does so do the kids. The kids feel like they're really successful, right? So next slide. Okay. So we can skip this because we were showing you this kind of. So what is the programming that we have for libraries and for schools? So we have something that after um, a school or a library does either a, a book club or story time, we have something called Meet the Makers. So you can sign up for a virtual field trip and we come and we have the experience, the Q&A with the animators, the motion capture artists, the actors, the technologists, and they get the kids get to ask questions. And I'm blown away by how many great questions come out of it and so are the teachers they go the critical thinking has not been the same the understanding of the material had not been the same but we get kids going you know when he said this or remember it wasn't about when they used the rocks to build a creek it was when they used the rocks to build a like people are blown away about how their uh students or patrons are retaining the information the story time curricula we also um, provide is expands vocabulary, social skills, and develops self-regulation and creativity. Our, like I said, between the dashboard, the engagements, the interactive materials that we give, I think you see an immersive experience that actually does look at the whole human and um, engages the whole human to have accuracy, self-efficacy, and better critical thinking. So um, I'm very excited. And the one thing I do want to say is because kids are all at different reading levels, mm. we've noticed some schools have bought for an entire grade level a variety of different books and mm -hmm. then had their kids in pods in a classroom so you might have six books of my father's dragon six books of animal farm and six books of great gatsby because of in the same class but the teacher can track them or the librarian can track track them in their book club to be able to talk with those pods and um and keep them in material so I think it's important for us to know we want to meet kids where they're at. We want to meet people where they're at with dignity and respect. We know, like I said before, they're very comfortable with this and we want to keep them in this and enjoying it and understanding it. Um, so that's uh, where we go. So right now we've been in um, over 125 libraries. Um, I do have to say uh, that's increased since last weekend in Tampa, school districts in five different states. And we're also um, a vendor in the Department of uh, Labor because of wake workforce training. And like mm -hmm. I mentioned, we do have research to prove our white paper. Mm -hmm. Now, I know if some of you are here um, from uh, universities. We are in a couple of universities already in their teaching programs and in their library skills programs and their library information programs. So and I'll mention here while you're showing here, because there's a link here to the white paper that um, the slide presentation for this um, these slides are on the event page for today's show already. I put them up there. So if you want, the slides are there for you to grab if you want to. Um, and uh, that will have, I believe in there, you'll be able to get a, that link uh, to the white paper. Um, and the um, the videos are in part of the slide presentation as well. Right. This is just a variety of our books. We also, like I said, have been doing things for um, workforce development, so um, in vocational training, and that's where I'm excited about the corrections program too, because um, what we see is that if they build confidence in reading, they'll build confidence in training material, which will keep them in training material as well. So this is really a dynamic product. I'm so excited about it because of the impact, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I don't apologize, 
I don't apologize. But um, also we've worked like we believe in being relatable. A lot of programs, especially when it comes to teaching, I feel are either dry, boring, or um, really are not relatable. Like I talked about earlier, I wanted to feel like you get me, right? So what was fascinating was having been in um, uh, very successful in programming and television and film. And when I went into education, I thought it has to connect to humans. The programming that I've worked on uh, prior, people used to say to me, you raised me, those were my friends. Well, now I wanted to create the friends that were in your books. So we took, uh, you know, I took from my relationships and we have some great actors who said, we wish this existed when we were growing up, how we would have benefited. And now they're wanting it for their own kids as well. So do you want to share this? Yep. Hang on a sec. I'm going to switch. I'm going to go over to my screen again. And It is I, Napoleon. Hello there. My name is Lil Buck the Fire Truck. It's okay. Curly would never understand what happened. Did you hear something? Now, don't get too excited. There are no robots in Shakespeare plays. Well, there's one right now, me. I always knew that his big secret would go over well with the family. Tis bad luck to say the name of my Scottish play in a theater. And we in the same boat in at least two ways. You're poor, no hope. I should go. If anyone asks, you didn't see me. I, I, I pulled you into the future to help us understand your Scottish play, Macbeth. We're going to help you understand the story, and we're going to have fun. We're even worse off than when we started. I love eating meat. It's all I eat. What are fleas, anyway? Uh, little spiders? Bugs? Oh, mother is going to love this. Come read the story about me, Cooper. Shakespeare used real curses in his play. Yeah, I see. Name's George. He's your Lenny. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> These are just a few. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Well, you know, like I said, and what I appreciated before we got on, Amanda, was you were saying you gave a quote from one of our books about what the um the wingman to Shakespeare is a robot woman. And tell us what you said she said. Like, you're the one who brought it. Oh, I paraphrase a little bit because I can't remember the exact phrasing, but I love it when a sassy little robot says, talking to Shakespeare, what were you thinking writing a book about two dying teenagers? <laughs> and I was like, agreed, robot. Agreed. So I think next I have on here. Hold on a I'll give presenter control back to you and get your slides back up on the screen. Okay. There you go. Perfect. Oh, we're not seeing. We're we're in black mode now. Um, I see your oh, I see slides it. still screen though. Oh, okay. Hold on, go to the net. Oops. So go. here's the QR code. And if you download that and then you download within the book, uh, within the LP book space, like I said, Audible's for AR. So you open up the app, you click on the book, it will download the experience with your own phone on your um, desktop. You can put, once you download Midsummer Night's Dream or My Father's Dragon or uh, Sleepy Hollow, you can download and watch it pop off of your screen. We are available, um, like I said, Google Classroom. We are available on uh, Clever. Clever. Thank you very much. Um, but we are also available on Chromebooks as well. And um, this is something that's important to us to stay connected within material that is classic or original that builds confidence in reading and identifying with characters that you feel like relate to you. So we do have some original books as well, deals with um, not controversially, 
being comfortable in your own skin, not controversially, I say to you, um, making sure you feel good about expressing your feelings in an appropriate way. And, um, and then some of the uh, required reading that's K through 12. Um, and like I said, from university level, when you're learning how to teach those grades or you're a librarian. Any questions? Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, um, leave this slide up here on, I think so. Yeah, for those of you who pre-registered, um, I did uh, send you an e all an email uh, yesterday, the end of the, of the day yesterday with the, um, asking you to do, use the QR code to download the app. It doesn't take very long if you didn't do it, that's fine. But yeah, go ahead and try it out right here. I did it, you know, hold your phone up to the um, camera to the QR code, and then after it's downloaded, hold it in front of one of these um, book covers. Sleepy Hollow might be a good one, it's time of year for that. And you can um, experience it and see exactly how it works with your device. Now, um, so here's a question. Yeah, what, I know you said, it says, it says phone. Um, does can it work on any device? Uh, it just says yeah, phones, tablets, like tablet or is there? Yeah, phones, tablets. We have, um, depending on you know, if you have a Title One school, I've had you know the carts with tablets. We've also had a teacher that's just you know uh, send her phone to a smart board and started a conversation and did read aloud. There's so many opportunities here. Nice. Reading aloud, asking the question to the students, asking them what they think it should be, if they got which one, um, and why. You know, it's been really cool to see. We've had um, both librarians in different um, areas of the same state talk to us about the different things that they've done and the kinds of questions and conversations that they've received. In similar, it's also been in schools, you have teachers who like to be creative on their own, and you have teachers who like to buy other teachers, you know, curriculum. And so it's been fascinating to see um, whether they're using their phones, their tablets, they send home, they send homework home, or when somebody, when a patron is checking out the book, the engagement with the parents and socioeconomically diverse, like families are very interesting because we've had almost like a fabulous confession from parents from black brown communities or indigenous communities who have said i'm i'm reading with my kid like and that is such a high to me because we all want connection and we all want community and the fact that we have community through a book is awesome oh yeah wow. absolutely yes yeah, so. Oh, and I wanted to give a quick side note for the people that are downloading the app. Um, one question that I got from libraries that were using it is that after you download it, when you try to find the app again, it will say LB um, bookcase instead of living pop-ups. We had people- oh, LP bookspace. It's, yeah. it's LP oh, yeah. bookspace is LP, the name yeah. of the app. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, LP bookspace. Um, and then once you have the app and once you've downloaded, if you just press to download the experiences, they'll pull up right away the, after the first time. They're a little bit longer the, after the first time, but then they download in a snap. Yep. Um, and the oh, thing yeah, I, do here I see to, now when I reopened it today, I've got one that I, I guess I downloaded the Sleepy Hollow one yesterday, and then I've got available for download some free examples, I guess. Yeah, so the other thing, so there's a couple of things that I want you to know for um, both in school libraries and in, um, in uh, public libraries. We give you a video that you can put on a monitor, like the one that showed the pop-ups in the beginning, that is without, you don't need the words. Kids are attracted to seeing what's happening. What is that? And then the other thing we give libraries are these cards that you can hand out to your patrons. Um, which shows the app itself and how to download it. Mm -hmm. Then we also, so it's these cards for the app itself. And then we give you individual cards based on books that we have as samples. And that's got the cover of the book 
And as well on the back, it has an AR experience within the book. And normally we try to make one that is a reading comprehension or some educational pedagogy question so that it could be vocabulary, it could be plot, it can be theme, it can be character base, or it can be comprehension. So um, we have different, uh, we have different cards with different books, different AR experiences from within the books, and you receive these as well as you order from us. And my suggestion is, honestly, there's different, um, you can buy a small bundle to try it. Because it, what we've seen is we've had county libraries buy for one and then start buying for five and then realizing they, because they also have that video that is in the front of their library as they walk in, people are wanting it and they're wanting it for their book clubs and they're wanting it for their story times. And so they've started to order more because they, they started by only ordering two or five. And so um, it's just been exciting to see. Whatever is in your comfort level, um, we just want to prove that how we can make the impact the way we do. And if you're in Nebraska, I'm actually looking at adding some of these to the tech kits or the mail. So pretty soon you'll actually be able to try them out that way too. And then you can do what you will with getting whatever you want and it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I love that you have somebody like Amanda who says, try it and see. Yeah, um, pretty much. Yeah. It just yeah. reduces the risk of exploration for that. Mm -hmm. and yeah, good and that's times what, yeah, a lot of all. things that Amanda does. We, you know, there's so many new things coming out tech related. That's why we have a technology innovation librarian here at the commission. And libraries can't be buying all these things just to test them out. They don't have the budget yeah. for that. No. Yeah, so right. we do that okay. for them, let you test it out. And then if it's something that does work in your library, then you can go on to um, buy your own. Um, but you can always just we also have sets of things that are like yeah yeah robots. you don't have to go and buy one if you don't want to you can still just keep um checking out our kits to do things with like checking out a book club kit that we do of books yeah and checking out bear in and, mind you have to put on your ringer and you do have to put on the volume of your phone um yeah. or your tablet so mm -hmm. yeah um, we do have some questions. Um, someone wants to know are these in English language only or do you have anything in other languages? Um, at the moment, it is in English. We have one boxcar children that is in Spanish. The fascinating thing is the international schools have said, you know, by research that showing this is how kids learn quicker by actually the character, they can hear how the characters speak in English, mm -hmm. use, um, instead of using an accent, because we have them being, we're selling in China based on the fact that normally Chinese teachers um, have uh, an accent and they're not getting the right pronunciation on English. So at the moment, it's just in English, but in the next six months, we will have it in other languages as well. Nice, Sweet. great. Uh, we have lots of you know um, communities in Nebraska with um, people speaking all sorts of languages, yeah. English um, as a second language is like everywhere right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, and it is fascinating. Like I said, parents and kids are learning how to speak English by using our books. Yeah. Um, so someone did you talked about the bundles and stuff. What is the or can you what is the cost for um, this? How much is it to? Um, well, we do have uh, we were giving an offering for uh, two book two copies in every. Uh, I can send you, it's on our website as well, but it's there was two copies of every book, the dashboard for a year and um, uh, a Meet the Maker session, I think it was. Uh, I, bear in mind, I don't have it in front of me, but I think it was just under $1,000 for two of every copy of every book in a, our library um, as of now and those offerings, the Meet the Maker session, the dashboard for a year, that kind of thing. And there's eight, 18 books in our library. So um, that was a starter kit. We have hard copy, we had hardcover books, uh, we have paperbacks. Um, but I know that our bundles are on our website. So if you click on the library section, you can see okay. the different offerings. 
But does it did that help you? Was it just my audio that cut oh, out no, for a second? Say, or was yeah, that... I lost sound for while you were talking there, Cheryl. Yeah, I didn't know if it was me or so I guess it oh. was. Yeah. Oh, so I did say on LP on uh, Living Pop Up. So LP Bookspace is the app, but on Living Pop Ups, our website, we mm -hmm. have um, offerings and bundles for libraries based on what their needs are. If they're going for middle school books, high school books, if they're going for um, a book club uh, scenario, we did just have an offer for ASL that I'm totally offering, which is um, two of every book in our library, the dashboard for a year and the meet the maker session um, for under $1,000. But there's um, all kinds of varieties of offerings and we do, you want to pick from the menu yourself, you can as well. Nice. Okay. Uh, all right, what other questions we have here? Um, all of our books, I do want to say too, all of our books are analogous to how you would buy. They're no like more, uh, they're the same comparable pricing as any Scholastic or HarperCollins or anything like that. Okay, cool. And then, and like I said, just getting the app, scanning the QR code, that is, that's free. Anyone can just do that because I did it without having That's it. free. The dashboard is yeah. 250 per per year and that's for however many patrons. Right. Depending that on was it. actually my next question because I couldn't find the cost of the dashboard on the website. Oh, okay. Good. Because it know. said that it was included in the package, but then I couldn't find what the cost was per year after. It might be on it, and I just couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, well, like I said, we're starting. We want to prove it makes it sense on the dollar because we want to prove that it works yeah yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and who doesn't like dragons come on people i know <laughs> like, like every year sleepy hollow is so fun you know there's certain oh, yeah. things that are you know what we tried to aim for fo first was like a number of our books are have tos we have a great book called little buck the fire truck for preschool through like up to second grade, depending on the reading level. But it also talks about fire preparedness. And yeah. guess what? Like this year, everywhere in the world was having, you know, the need for understanding of what it meant, what's a healthy fire, what's not safe, you know, yeah. all kinds of things. And it's so cool. It's based on a real truck out of Santa Rosa, California, that's still legendary and just went into the Children's Museum. Yeah. <laughs> nice yeah um, all right and so like do, go ahead and like the libraries that were doing programming around the wildfires that were in california and canada because like the smoke was just covering everywhere that right. could be a fun book for that too oh yeah it's hard to sure say it's a oh the 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 curricula that we offer has really cool crafts projects that are like things that you have around you can have your patrons bring in whether it's the recycled water bottle you know we really try to look at social impact too and have them participating um I, it's i i'm really really excited about how we have engagement going on mm -hmm. that's amazing yeah uh so we do have questions about um some more and i'm not sure how much you know about the the technical issues of it and i was interested too because um, you mentioned that um, that part of the coursework is meeting how the people who make this happen, like how the animation is done. And you mentioned mocap, that motion capture. Is to, can yeah. you talk a little bit about how it was done? Sure. So um, when they have a meet the makers, they get to see how with the suits, how the um, mm -hmm. Actors who are having the motion capture suits on are assigned to the technology that becomes the animation. So mm -hmm. it's super cool. I mean, what I love is kids get to see possibility of careers from yeah. a book like Midsummer Night's Dream or My Father's Dragon. Hook them young to go, oh, I might be passionate about that. Oh, I might learn. And we also talk about how we're using AI and how to use it in a safe and proper way, you know? Um, yeah, so- Not really I, that that's like, a, that's a career, that's and that's kind of linking technology to it, that that's a career option of this motion capture. Um, oh, uh, being a motion capture it, artist, being a voiceover yeah. artist. 
you know, oh, yeah. being an educator who works with a comedy writer from television to actually make the scripts for the augmented reality pieces mm -hmm. because they have to hit the educational core curriculum. Then kids are actually having the depth of why they're learning what they're right. learning. Right. So it's not just we're the, reading the book as little animated characters. There's so much more to it. Yeah. 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 And that's um, why I also loved it for like the career exploration aspect for like the workforce development and what can I do kind of thing. Yeah. Sweet. I think. About things, yeah. yeah. Like Amanda, sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this uh, this motion capture technology is just amazing what they do and how immersive it is. And it, it's yeah. I, there is definitely a difference watching animated characters that have been motion captured as opposed to just animated. I guess. Um, yeah. I've been. Um, I totally I'm, agree I'm with you. Big, huh? Sorry, no, I what? totally agree with you. Yeah. That's why when I said we make it relatable, because mm -hmm. they're working with real human bodies. They're mm -hmm humans yeah um yeah, yeah. my husband and i we're big we're big nerds i'll, 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 I'll full on admit that and we've been playing baldur's gate 3 new <laughs> dungeons and dragons game nice. and it all of the um animation all of the interactions you have with the characters there were all done with motion capture they actually had 240 something actors that did it it wasn't wow. just a few here and there for your little cut scenes and talking to someone it's almost everyone you interact with in this gigantic game and it is so different i've gotten distracted away and i know the whole point of this is like read the book learn about it and understand the book but i'm doing that in the game and understanding the story but now i'm distracted looking up all these actors and motion capture people and that technology and how that is and i'm, I'm a, i get distracted from the game <laughs> <laughs> looking getting interested in yeah. mocap and i'm like this is so cool and well, i want to even offer up that like if somebody is that kind of interested and wants to continue the conversation they can apply for internships because oh, sure. we want to show from the books how they'll stay and even how we go about like my my favorite new book that we're that's just coming out in the next couple of weeks is great gatsby oh. okay the character, we have great Gatsby, we have Gatsby himself, and then two kids, one who she's like, I'm really good at this. The other kid is like, I'm so lost. Can you help me out? And so you feel like it's your friends who are breaking down the material for you. Yeah, you know, and that's like, in my, I just did a session for Internet Librarian last week. And that session, I started it out with saying, if your community introduced kids to augmented reality and you train 20 augmented reality developers, where would they work in Nebraska? Mm -hmm. So you talk about internships, but then how can the library actually connect kids over? Like high okay, school. So I, have, I have an idea. We're coming up with it right here, Amanda. You as a library system get kids so involved and want to, we can create a pilot program where we can create an AR experience that has you exploring the library. Sweet. There you go. That, that yeah. Is, okay. And then that's something that you can start piloting in one library. And then with our toolkit, you can create for your other libraries. Love it. Love to see who I think would people be like that. Yeah volunteer to do that yes because <laughs> i know well, they'll, the they'll get kids into the library and they'll keep coming back mm -hmm. the thing is you want them to become repeat customers not just because they have to but because they want to and they want to explore I'm, the different genres you know because i know the augmented reality scavenger hunts were really popular i think it was like a couple years ago or even mm -hmm. like still now mm -hmm. and being able to add on to that and translate it from just fun scavenger hunt to this is a thing you can actually do right. or this is like a cool book that helps you learn and process information but now this is right. something you can actually do would be kind of awesome totally so i just want to recap you get cards you get a video and then it also shows how the book and the app go together yeah interesting I have to go. <laughs>
<laughs> Are there any other questions? Um, um, yeah, yeah, just one more question. I just want to grab because um, we still have about 15 minutes left in the show. If anyone has any questions, or I can do my wrap up. Oh. Um, oh. You had a lot of, I don't know if you saw my face, really famous actors and people that I love on here. How did you get them all to do this? Um, I started a lot of their careers. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, they, they know them, they know you. It's like, um, hey, I was, so uh, I, I, my background is I was head of uh, talent and development at ABC Disney. I oh, developed nice. Roseanne, Home Improvement, My So Called Life. I then um, developed from books because I love books. I developed from a book called Kick Me that Paul Feig wrote. Um, freaks and Geeks. I developed mm -hmm. from a book called Sex in the City. Um, I developed uh, In Living Color. I developed uh, that 70s show, Family Guy, Malcolm in the Middle, Dave Chappelle's first show. So understand, and The Simpsons, and uh, a lot. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's great. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Cheryl, for being here with us today. Yeah, if you do have to run, that's fine. We will wrap things up well, the here. Quick thing um, that I will say from that is that I saw that I was successful at programming on television and that that was an honor and a privilege that whether you were in your pajamas or in your underwear and you were watching us on TV in your living room or bedroom, I went into education because I thought if I can make an impact in television, then we can do it in education. Mm -hmm. And so I started brick and mortar free schools and enrichment programs, and then was invited to be a part of rewriting the blueprint to the California State Education Plan. So mm -hmm. this comes from a natural progression of sure. literacy is the gateway to everything, and that's where um, we are. Agreed, yes. Well, I think this is definitely something that is going to ha has an impression and will, and I hope a lot of our libraries um, try it out um, and bring it to, out to more, um, more kids. I, I have I'm a sneaking the suspicion they will. Yes, <laughs> it's just fun uh, too, which makes a huge difference. Yeah. All thank right. You. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Um, thank you. Uh, and so, if anyone has any, yeah, we have links to the their website on our session page, and I'll show you all that. Um, you can reach out to them and reach out to Cheryl um, for more information. So I'm going to pull presenter control back to my screen again. Thank you so much, you guys. Bye for now. Yeah. Bye. 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 Thanks Bye. a lot. Exit. <laughs> there you go. All right. All right. So um, that wraps up for the presentation. Um, does anybody have any other questions? There may be some things that Amanda or I can answer um, about this because I know Amanda, like I said, you wrote up about it and, and have looked into it a little. If anybody does have any questions, um, I think it's an awesome, fun thing. I just want to play around with that on my phone. Um, we did have somebody and myself do had a little technical issues with this morning. It seems to be hiccuping for me, but um, it worked yesterday on my phone. So um, I think maybe try again later or something. Like I did have that happen once or twice, but then when I opened it the next day, it was fine. Yeah. So, so just, or yeah. I just close and open it and it was fine. Yeah. So definitely. Like any app ever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so this is really cool. Yeah. So I was, I'd seen, you know, I'd seen the examples of it before. Um, and like I said, the videos are um, in. Here's the our session page. We've got the slide presentation up there already for you. Um, and and um, I also, oh, sorry. oh, go ahead. I also have like a mini activity where you can try playing with even like a free sample of the book and then download an app called Halo AR and it basically lets you make your own augmented reality book. So cool. you can like um, if you don't mind sticking stickers on the book you can actually stick a sticker onto the book and then use that as the trigger for augmented reality. So you would point your camera at the sticker and then you would tell it to either pull up a video or pull up a little animated character or a 3D object or like whatever media object you want to. And you can build your whole little story just using that. So honestly, Halo AR could actually be its own little Encompass session. I don't, sure. I don't think we did that one before. I don't recall it, no. Yeah. I'd have to look, Maybe, but yeah, I don't yeah. remember that one. Yeah, we can definitely think about doing that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so here's the page link to the LP book spaces, living pop-ups. Uh, the videos are in the slide presentation. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I think since I've uploaded it to uh, 
slide share it doesn't have live links so i'm going to take these three videos and i'll link them here on the page um, i've got the the links here for the one the three videos that we showed so you'll have access to those quick links to those on here i'll add them there for when the recording um is us added as well um all right, i don't see any other questions that have come in so i think we will um do a little wrap up here uh the show as i said is recorded and it goes on to our archive page uh here um actually i'll pop over to our main page this is our main encompass live page with our upcoming shows and at the bottom of the list is a link to our archive page where our most recent one will go at the top of the list here we'll have a link to this recording on our youtube channel uh the slides are already there i'll be adding the links to these three uh the three videos they had to the session page as well um, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get a link from an email from me letting you know when the recording is ready. Should be by the end of the day tomorrow, at the very latest. Um, we also push it out onto our various social media. We do have a Facebook page for Encompass Live. If you like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. We do reminders. She's a reminder to log in today's show, meet the presenter, and then um, where's the previous one? We announce when the recordings are available of preview of the shows too. Uh, we also post out to Twitter and Instagram, and we have a little hashtag Encump Live, a little abbreviation of our name that you can use. Um, look over there to see um, what we're doing. Um, if you're in Nebraska, you can also sign up. We have a mailing list for the Library Commission and our regional systems that you can do. Um, this is our show archives, and there's a search feature here if you want to see if we've done a show on a particular topic. Like, what was it you were talking about? Halo something or other? Would that be just Halo? Um, it's Halo AR. AR. Let's see. Nope. <laughs> I might have put it as like two separate. Yeah, I just did no, Halo. Halo either. Came up, no. Um, yeah, I probably did it for a different thing. Yeah. Maybe I did okay. it for a conference. We'll think about that for a future and uh, pretty sweet tech. Uh, but this is our full show archives, and you can search for any topic and see if we've done something. Um, and I'll, I'm not going to scroll all the way to the bottom because it's a huge list, but this is our full show archives going back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was in January 2009. We're 15 years old. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, and... Uh, so do pay attention to the original broadcast date of anything um, that you watch on the recordings. There is the date here of when it was first done. Um, so you can tell how old something is. Uh, some of the shows will be fine and good to watch and stand the test of time, but some things will become old or outdated. Uh, resources and services may have changed drastically or have disappeared, closed down completely. Um, uh, People may work at totally different libraries or different places than when they presented for us. So just pay attention to that original broadcast date when you do watch anything here. Um, but as long as we have a place to host all of our things, this is something libraries do, keeping things for historical purposes. Um, as long as we have somewhere that can host them, which right now every all of our uh, recordings are on our Library Commission's YouTube channel, we will have them available for you. Uh, so that'll wrap it up for uh, this month's Pretty Sweet Tech. Uh, jumping ahead to next month, we just put this on the calendar yesterday. Um, like I said, every last Wednesday of the month is a pretty sweet tech day with Amanda, and she's going to be talking about Internet Librarian that just happened. Yep. It, it actually really wasn't that long ago. No. <laughs> you know? um, that was last week. Yes. And Internet Librarian is online now entirely, correct? Right? Yeah. And they're they're probably going to do it online going forward because people liked I mean. having that virtual option so much. Yeah. And they'll probably do CIL computers and libraries in person. So there's like one in person and then one virtual. Yeah. Yeah. So computers and libraries is I always think of it as kind of like a sister conference to inner librarian. Um, historically, uh, computers and libraries is held in Washington D.C. area, and yep. Internet Librarian was in Monterey, California. Um, I've been to both of them over the years, and Same. when yeah. COVID, uh, the COVID pandemic started, they went virtual, calling it whatever connect, um, and they have now brought back the in-person um, East Coast one, but have kept this one as um, virtual. So, yep. But um, Amanda usually goes and or attends and presents, like you were talking about, and um, sometimes, and then brings back some info about what she saw there. So, uh, sign up for her next. Uh, pretty sweet tech and it is always the last Friday of the month. Wait, we'll see what'll come up for December, but that's months and months away. 
<laughs> um, Maybe so, so Haley are. Yeah. yeah. And these are, we've got all of our, everything book scheduled for the rest of this year. And we started getting into January 2024 even. So you've um, signed up for any of our up upcoming ones. Next week, uh, the first of November, we'll be talking about Nebraska's Golden Silver Award. This is Nebraska's Children's Choice Literary Award. Um, the Nebraska Library Association uh, sponsors this award. And they've been um, doing some updating and, and changing of the award. And it actually um, opens up. I think the voting for the children to choose the, the books actually opens on November 1st. So uh, hmm. Ann Price uh, from their committee is going to be with us here on Encompass Live to talk about everything at Golden Sower. So if you work either in a public library or a school library, this is a session for you to um, get the kids in your library and community reading books and voting on them. Sweet. Yeah. So I don't see any other desperate questions coming in. So I think that will wrap up for today. Thank you so much, Amanda. This is great. Thank you for bringing Cheryl on the show. Um, this is just a really fun thing, I think, to do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and um, hopefully we'll get some libraries. Um, you know, once Amanda gets it into her tech kits, you still work on getting them in your tech kits, right? Correct. Yeah. 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 She'll announce when that's available and you'll be able to um, borrow it and test it out. So mm -hmm. other than that, Thank you, everyone. That wraps up for today. Thanks, Amanda. Good to see you. I'll see you yeah. in another month. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> and hopefully we'll see some of you on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye.